Hello, today's video is going to be about a Peter Pan record that I bought many years ago when I was a child, Peter Rabbit. And there were four little rabbits who were named Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They all wore bright little jackets and shoes with silver buckles on them. One day, the mother said to them, I'm going to the baker's to get some brown bread and buns. You little ones may go into the fields or down the lane to play, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. As soon as their mother left, Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very, very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Mmm, look at all this nice lettuce and radishes. So Peter Rabbit wandered around, gathering up a lot of nice fresh vegetables. Well, that's the kind of food that rabbits like. Just as he went around the end of the cucumber patch, who should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Uh-oh, there's that mean farmer. I must run away quickly. But, oh dear me, I, I seem to be lost. I can't find my way back to the gate. As Peter scampered away, Farmer McGregor ran after him, waving a rake and calling out, oh, Stop, thief! I'll catch you, you naughty rabbit! And then my good wife will cook you up into a rabbit stew. But Peter ran faster and faster. He might have gotten away altogether if he had not run straight into a gooseberry bush and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. Little Peter Rabbit gave himself up for lost, and he shed big tears. And then up came Mr. McGregor. Uh -huh. No, I've got you caught at last, Peter Rabbit. But Peter wriggled out just in time. And leaving his jacket behind him, he rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a sprinkling can. Oh, my, that was a close call. This sprinkling can would be a wonderful place to hide if it didn't have so much water in it. Farmer McGregor was sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed. Perhaps hiding underneath a flower pot. And then an awful thing happened. From sitting in that cold water, Peter Rabbit had to sneeze. <laughs> Oh, Mr. McGregor was after him in no time at all. And then Peter jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. And he was safe for the moment. Peter sat down to rest a little bit. He was very, very tired. He was out of breath from running. And was trembling with fright. Because he had not the least idea of which way to go. I must find my way out of this garden. That mean farmer may catch me yet. But oh, my poor mother would be so sad if I didn't ever come home ever again. Peter Rabbit began to wander about, going lippity-lippity and looking all around to find the garden gate. He found a locked door in the wall, but there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Please, Mrs. Mouse, can you show me the way to the garden gate? I'm lost and I'm so afraid of Farmer McGregor. But Mrs. Mouse had such a large mouthful of peas and beans that she couldn't answer. She only shook her little head and scampered away. <gasps> Poor little Peter Rabbit. He tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. He began to cry again, a very quiet little cry, so he wouldn't reveal his hiding place. Oh, my. Oh, my. As he went back towards the tool shed, suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttled underneath the bushes. He held his breath. <gasps> he was panting so hard from running, he thought maybe Mr. McGregor might hear him breathing. Presently, as nothing happened, he came out and jumped upon a wheelbarrow and peeked over. Uh-oh. There's Farmer McGregor hoeing onions, but his back is toward me. Oh, my. There, just beyond is the garden gate. But how can I ever reach it without being seen? Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running along the straight walk behind some black currant bushes. 
But Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner. Stop, you little rascal! I won't have you stealing my fresh green vegetables. Oh, if I can only make that gate, then I'll be safe. And he ran as if his life depended upon it, which actually it did. And he slipped underneath the gate, into the wood outside of the garden, and was safe. Peter Rabbit never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home. Oh, I'm so tired. I think I'll just lie down here on the nice, soft sand and close my eyes. His mother was busy cooking, but she wondered what Peter had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that he had lost in two weeks. But she let him sleep until dinner time. When the evening meal was ready, little Peter opened his eyes and said, Mother... I don't feel very well. That's because you were naughty and disobeyed me. But she didn't punish him. Because his frightening experience was punishment enough. And Peter promised never to disobey his mother again. And that's the tale of Peter Rabbit and his adventures in Farmer McGregor's garden. white as snow. Every morning, all the little birds would gather at Snow White's window and sing this little song. Oh, there's nothing like a song to start the day, right? Pucker up your lips and whistle at the sunlight. Nothing like a song to stop the day, right? Snow White was very happy and loved everyone. But she didn't know that her stepmother, the queen, who was also very beautiful, was jealous of her. Each night the queen would sit in front of her magic mirror and ask... Oh, mirror, mirror on the wall, am I most beautiful of all? Oh, lovely queen, thou art so fair, in all the land none can compare. This would make the queen very happy, for she knew the magic mirror would speak only the truth. Many years passed, and Snow White grew more and more beautiful. Then one day, the queen spoke again to the magic mirror. Oh, mirror, mirror on the wall, am I most beautiful of all? Oh, lovely queen, though you are fair, with Snow White you can't compare. The queen went into a jealous rage and ordered a hunter to take Snow White into the forest and leave her there. So the very next morning, the hunter took Snow White far into the woods and left her there. Poor Snow White, lost in the wood. Poor Snow White, so misunderstood. What will she eat and where will she sleep? Poor Snow White, lost in the wood. Snow White wandered through the forest until she was so tired and hungry she couldn't go any farther. Just then she saw a pretty little cottage. She knocked on the door. And when no one answered, she went in. Oh, what a pretty little cottage, pretty as a picture on the wall. Just look at that table with seven little chairs, and look, there are seven little beds upstairs. And just try imagining seven little everything everywhere you look in this dollhouse. Mm, what a lovely little cottage, I think I'll stay right here. She sat down in a chair by the fire. And it wasn't long before she fell fast asleep. Out of the woods, out of the woods came seven little men. One at a time they knocked at the door. 
Open the door. Open the door. When Snow White opened the door, she was frightened. There before her were seven little dwarfs, all standing in a row. We're seven little dwarfs, no bigger than your thumb. Tiddly-dee, tiddly-dye, tiddly-dum-dum. We're seven little dwarfs, no bigger than your thumb. Tiddly-dee, tiddly-dye, tiddly-dum-dum. Our names are Dumpy, Hot and Hand. Into the cottage came the seven dwarfs. They were very angry. But upon seeing the beautiful young princess, Snow White, they all fell in love with her. And they decided to let her stay with them as long as she wished. You're welcome. There's always room for one more. You're welcome. The welcome sign is on the door. You can stay with us as long as you like with us. You can play with us, go on a hike with us. It's one for all and all for one. And you're the one for us all. Hey! Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs lived very happily together in the little white cottage. One day, the queen sat in front of her magic mirror and asked, Oh, mirror, mirror, tell me tonight, whatever happened to Snow White? Snow White lives in the forest glen, in a pretty little cottage with seven little men. When the queen found where Snow White was living, she dressed up like an old woman and went to Snow White's door and gave her a poisoned apple. Apples, apples. Shiny red apples, beautiful juicy red apples for sale. Won't you buy my apples? Won't you try my apples and put the red of an apple into cheeks so pale? Apples, apples, juicy red apples. Here you are, my dear. Just take a bite of this delicious apple. <laughs> no sooner than Snow White had taken the first bite of the apple, a terrible thing happened. She fell to the floor in a deep, deep sleep with part of the apple still in her mouth. That evening, when the seven little dwarfs came home and found Snow White lying on the floor, they thought she was dead. And they decided to dress her in a shimmering golden dress and put her into a pure glass case. The next day, a handsome prince who was riding in the forest stopped at the cottage. And when he saw the lovely Snow White, he couldn't believe his eyes. You're so beautiful. You're so wonderful. Just too wonderful to be true. Unbelievable. the lid of the glass case, and in so doing, knocked the poison apple from her lips, and Snow White came to life. I can see again, see again, hear again, hear again, hear again. think again, think again, again, clear again, it's so good to be alive. I feel like singing again, la, 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 la. it's all beginning again, la, 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 la. it's so good, so good, so good. Snow White alive, the prince asked her to be his bride. And so Snow White and the seven dwarfs went with the prince to the great palace where they lived happily ever after. Snow White, Snow White, loveliest princess of It was spring, and the little circus train knew it. It was time to take the circus up north 
so that children in every town and city could see the greatest show on earth. The little circus train had an engine that was glossy black with red smokestacks and shiny red wheels. And every car was a different color with gay painted decorations. It was spring. And when the circus train clanged its bright brass bell, it said, Spring! Cling! Clang! Spring! Cling! Clang! I'll carry the circus across the land. There were lions in cages and elephants in big, heavy cars. There was even a golden calliope that played special circus music. Chuggity chug went the circus train across the country. Then, up ahead, the little circus train saw the first town the circus was to play. The red whistle on the engine tooted gaily. The lions all roared. The elephants all trumpeted. The seals barked. The little circus train chugged along the track into the town. Isn't this exciting, it thought. Carrying this wonderful, noisy circus is almost like being the circus myself. In the railroad yard, the train came to a stop. All the circus people piled out of their cars. Big ones, little ones, medium-sized ones were all doing things. The elephants and horses were let out of their cars and began pulling cages and hauling wagons. And before long, there was very little left of the circus train. There it stood, just the engine, some flat platforms on wheels, and a caboose. Now the rest of the circus lined itself up for the parade. The calliope began to play its toodle dee doodle dee do music, and the whole parade marched off, leaving the little circus train, or what remained of it, quite deserted. This is terrible, thought the train. This is terrible, awful. They have really left me, and now I won't be a part of the circus after all. I won't even get to see the circus. The poor little train tooted its whistle sadly. But nobody heard it, and in every town it was always the same. I do the hardest work and have none of the fun, thought the little circus train. Then one night, while the train waited sadly in a little town, a gust of wind set its bell ringing. Slowly and softly, the bell rocked in the wind, and it said, Sing, cling, clang, sing, cling, clang. The whistle and I can be the circus band. The little circus train grew so excited at this idea that it gathered all its strength and the little bit of steam left in it and then it tried to whistle the Calliope Circus Parade music. But all that came out was a sad little... Tweet. Sing, sing, it's spring, clanged the bell as it rocked in the wind. The little circus train tried again. And what do you know? Soft as the Calliope when it was blocks away came the whistle. I can do it, thought the train. Now they will just have to let me be in the circus parade. They'll just have to. Later, as the little train pulled the circus northward, it was impatient to try its new song. If the circus boss hears it, he'll just have to let me be in the parade, the train told itself for the umpty ninth time. It was a very wishy little train. And then, as the circus train approached the next town, a very strange thing happened. Something that had never happened before. There, up ahead on the track, stood a railroad man waving a bright red signal flag. Whoosh! Went the circus train's brakes as it slowed to a stop. Jerk! Rattle! Jerk! 
went the cars, slowing down to a stop, too. What's the matter up there? yelled the circus boss, running up to the engine. What's going on? he asked when he saw the railroad man with the red flag. Can't bring your train into town, the man said. There's no railroad yard here. The circus boss's face grew very red. But what about our parade, he sputtered. We always have a parade up the main street. The railroad man shook his head. Railroad tracks go right spang up the middle of our main street, he said. Can't have a parade on the railroad tracks, you know. The circus boss just stood there saying, But, 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 while the man with the red flag shook his head. And now the little circus train had the happiest thought of its life. Suppose it carried the circus parade on the railroad tracks right spang up the middle of the main street. That would fix everything. And then at last it would have a chance to be in a circus parade. Now was the time to show the circus boss what it could do. So the whistle and the bell played their music as loud as they could. Doodle dee cling! Doodle dee clang! Doodle dee doodle dee twerkus! I'll pull the train cling! Through the town clang! That will be the parade of the circus! The circus boss jumped into the air and clapped his hands. That's it! He cried. We'll do the parade right on the circus train. We'll go right through the town and then unload on the other side. Okay? The signal man nodded his head and waved the train on with his red flag. And that's how the little circus train came to lead the parade through the town of Centerville. Proudly, it chugged along the tracks, spang up the middle of Main Street. Its whistle played the toodle dee do circus music while its bell cling-clanged merrily. The elephants didn't have to push or pull anything, so they waved flags in their long trunks. The lions roared and all the animals joined in. But most marvelous of all was the little circus train itself. Right up the tracks in the middle of the main street, the little circus train chugged, moving slowly so that everyone could see and hear the whole wonderful parade. And the little train's bell and whistle sang, Toodle dee cling, toodle dee clang, toodle dee doodle dee twerk us. Look at me cling, look at me clang, I'm leading the parade of the circus. And like a great white banner overhead, its smoke puffed out in fat, fluffy letters, the greatest parade on earth. Stay tuned for part two of my video.